Hello and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering EDH deck tech idea. Today we are taking a look at Mirkul, Lord of Bones. It is a 7 mana 7 5 Absan commander, and as long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total, Mirkul, Lord of Bones, has indestructible. We do pretty much neglect that point of Mirkul, because we are interested in his triggered ability. Whenever another non token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's an enchantment and loses all other card types. This means that we are able to recycle our powerful creatures into enchantments. That means that we play a lot of creatures that have powerful repeatable effects to leverage their power into our wincon. But Mirkul is a 7 mana commander so we first need to ramp a little bit. So we play Composer of Spring, a 2 mana 1 free with constellation, which means that whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control 6 or more enchantments, instead you may put a creature or land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. This card does it all for us. It helps us in our early game, and even in the late game it is a very powerful creature, and if it happens that we turn this one into an enchantment itself, we will be able to keep repeating this process of constellation over and over again, which is a lot of value for us. We also play Destiny Spinner, a 2 mana 2 free, and creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. So even if this creature gets removed at some point while we have Merkul on the battlefield, we will turn it into an enchantment, which will then protect our creature and enchantment spells by not being able to counter them. For 4 mana, target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. This activated ability can also be very helpful for us to at some point create an overrun effect. We also play Dryad of the Elysian Grove, a 3 mana 2-4 and you may play an additional land on each of your turns, which is definitely what we need in this deck, and lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, which can also be quite helpful if you are playing this on a budget land base to turn all of your lands into every other basic land type. We also play Kalni Heart Expedition, a 2 mana enchantment with landfall, so whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a quest counter on Kalni Heart Expedition. You can remove free counters and sacrifice it to search a library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. Due to the fact that we also play an enchantment deck, we play Sanctum Weaver, a 2 mana 0 2, and we can tap it to add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of enchantments you control. Last but not least we play Mirari's Wake, a 5 mana enchantment and creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and whenever you tap a land for mana, add 1 mana of any type that land produced. This midrange enchantment will be a remove on sight for your opponents, but if it happens that it sticks around until your next turn, you can profit from this one a lot. Once we have fixed our mana base, we want to bring out our win cons, which we then can also turn into enchantments. Creatures that we would like to recycle are for example Maha, it's Feather's Knight, a 5 mana 6-5 with flying and trample. It has ward, so your opponents have to discard a card if they want to target it. And creatures your opponents control have base toughness 1. A great combination with Maha is Elishnorn, Grand Cenobite, a 7 mana 4-7 with Vigilance. And other creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 and creatures your opponents control get minus 2 minus 2. Which is basically a permanent board wipe for your opponents if it happens that you have Maha and Elishnorn on the battlefield. To be able to recycle more creatures in our graveyard, we also play Shieldred, Whispering One, a 7 mana 6 6 with Swamp Walk, and at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And even more powerful is her other triggered ability at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. This is another great way to keep the board in check, because your opponents will have to sacrifice their creatures over and over again. Another powerful stacks piece that we want to play is Drana and Linvala, a 4 mana 3 4 with flying and vigilance, and activated abilities of creatures your opponents control can't be activated. Drana and Linvala has all activated abilities of all creatures your opponents control, and you may spend mana, a dodo mana of any one color to activate those abilities. We keep stacking, Falia and the Gitrock monster, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four with first strike and death touch which is a very powerful creature that does it all for us. 
First of all, you may play an additional land on each of your turns, which will help you to accelerate your game plan. In addition to that, creatures and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. And furthermore, she is also a sacrifice outlet, because whenever she attacks, sacrifice a creature or land and then draw a card. And another win con of ours is Tender Shoot Riot, a 5 mana 2-2 two -two with Ascend, and at the beginning of each upkeep create a 1-1 one -one green Suprawling creature token. Suprawlings you control get plus 2 plus 2 as long as you have the city's blessing. All of these creatures have very powerful effects while they are still creatures and on the board, and they become even more hard to handle as soon as you have turned them into enchantments. Now we also need ways to sacrifice those creatures if our opponents try to interact with them. For example, Wolf Strider, a 3 mana 3 2, and when it enters, create a 0 1 white goat creature token. You can sacrifice another creature to scry 1. You can also cast this card from your graveyard by escaping it for 5 mana and exiling 4 other cards from your graveyard, and when it escapes, it enters with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. You also play Arshnod's Altar, a 3 mana artifact, sacrifice a creature to add 2 colorless mana. We play with Sarah Seer, a 1 mana 1 1, and you can sacrifice a creature to scry 1. Of course, we play Carrion Feeder, a 1 mana 1 1, it can't block, and you can sacrifice a creature to put a 1 1 counter on Carrion Feeder. And even more powerful effects are for example Flare of Fortitude, a 4 mana instant, and you may sacrifice a non-token white creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost, and until end of turn your life total can't change, and permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible. We also play the black version of it, Flare of Malice, a 4 mana instant, you may sacrifice a non-token black creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost, and each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. You want to win more? You get it. Merkul allows us to play some very cool interactions, for example Devoted Druid, a 2 mana 0 2 and you can tap it to add 1 green mana. It also has an activated ability, you can put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on Devoted Druid to untap Devoted Druid. As soon as we have turned Devoted Druid into an enchantment, you can use its activated abilities to constantly untap it by putting an infinite amount of minus 1 minus 1 counters on it, and with that also create an infinite amount of green mana. Another cool card in this deck is Barrington Medic, a 5 mana 0 4, you can tap it to prevent the next 1 damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn. You can also put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on the Barrington Medic to untap it. This will allow you to never take damage again. And to immediately put your opponents out of resources you play Cinder Haze Wretch, a 5 mana 3 2. You can tap it so target player discards a card, but you can only play this ability during your turn. But you can put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on the Cinder Haze Wretch to also untap it. This will allow you to make all of your opponents discard their hands during your turn, which will put them all out of resources and also force them to play all of their interaction during their turn, because as soon as it's your turn again, you will make them discard everything again. Once you have put them all out of resources, you will be able to overrun them with your creatures, and that should secure you the win. Alright guys, these were a few cards that I will play in Mirkul, Lord of Bones. Make sure to check out my decklist in the notes below. Let me know down in the comments which cards you would add to the deck, which legendary creature I shall feature next, and then I would say, see you in the next one. Goodbye guys!